The Young Turk Revolution It is too easy to blame the Ottoman Empire's failures on the Young Turks. One may be tempted to label them as secular enemies of the Ottoman state. But a closer look at their history before the Great War provides some nuance. Not long after Sultan Abdul Hamid II took the throne in 1876, the Ottoman Empire was again at war with Russia. By the time the war was over, the empire had lost most of its territory in the Balkans, the island of Cyprus, and Algeria in North Africa. In the aftermath of this defeat, Abdul Hamid II suspended the new Ottoman constitution and dissolved parliament. He considered them tools of Western influence and preferred to emphasize the empire's Islamic identity. With the loss of most of its Christian territory, the empire was now almost completely Muslim. Most Ottoman citizens went along with their caliph and had no problem with his three decades of autocratic rule. However, the Ottoman intellectuals that had convinced the sultan to accept the constitution in the first place were not happy. In 1889, several Istanbul University students were implicated in a plot against the sultan. Abdul Hamid unleashed his secret police on his opponents, forcing them to go underground or flee to Paris. Over the next 30 years, the various opposition groups, particularly the young Ottomans, quietly extended their network throughout the empire. But they were most successful in infiltrating the military. Much of this intrigue took place in the empire's third army based in Salonika, now part of modern-day Greece. At the very edge of the Ottoman Empire's domain, Salonika was the perfect breeding ground for these secret organizations. Salonika was unique in that it was the only European city with a majority Jewish population. However, Salonika was rife with anarchist and rebellious fervor. The Kingdom of Greece, which coveted the city for itself, was constantly meddling in its affairs. And Salonika had at least two very active Freemasonic lodges. This was the city that would become the flashpoint for the Sultan's downfall. Salonika's postmaster was a government bureaucrat and Freemason named Mehmed Talat. Mehmed Talat was the founder of a secret organization which merged with other like-minded organizations to form the Committee for Union and Progress, or CUP for short. Mehmed Talat, or Talat Pasha as he'd later be known, convinced Jamal Pasha to join CUP. Jamal Pasha was one of the commanders of the 3rd Army. Jamal Pasha convinced other soldiers in the 3rd Army to join the Committee for Union and Progress, including a major named Ahmed Niazi and a young officer named Ismail Enver. In the summer of 1908, Sultan Abdul Hamid's secret police discovered Cup's activities in the 3rd Army and moved in to arrest the culprits. But someone tipped them off and the members of Cup fled to the hills of Salonika. Among them were Major Ahmed Niazi and Ismail Enver. Though they avoided arrest, Ahmed Niazi, Ismail Enver, and their fellow soldiers could not hide forever. At some point, they'd have to return to their bases where they'd be arrested and court-martialed. Rather than deal with this, they decided to march to Istanbul and demand the Sultan restore the constitution. As the members of CUP marched through the Balkans towards the capital, several guerrilla bands of Albanian Muslims joined them. 
these Albanians were concerned about the weakening Ottoman presence in the Balkans. They believed Major Niazi and a cup were their best chance at preventing Russian domination. Their numbers continued to grow and they easily overran the Sultan's troops. As they closed in on Istanbul, the Sultan's cabinet panicked and convened various meetings that resolved nothing. As word spread through the streets of Istanbul, the tide seemed to turn against the Sultan. Sultan Abdul Hamid II, now 65 years old, did not want to risk a civil war. On July 24, 1908, he agreed to reinstate the Constitution and reconvene Parliament. The Committee for Union and Progress, or the Young Turks as foreigners called them, did not take power just yet. They were mostly soldiers and had no stomach for politics. Their representatives remained in Istanbul as an oversight committee to ensure the Sultan did not try to regain power. Over the next several weeks, the new parliament passed laws that concentrated power in Istanbul and further secularized the empire. But just like in 1877, the empire's foreign enemies took advantage of its weakness during this transition. A few months after the Young Turk Revolution, Bulgaria, which was already an autonomous province, declared complete independence from the Ottoman Empire. The very next day, Austria-Hungary annexed Bosnia and Herzegovina. And soon after that, Crete seceded from the empire and merged with Greece. These sudden territorial losses turned many people against Cup and the new parliament. In particular, several young soldiers from the Ottoman Empire's first army were furious the new leadership did nothing to prevent these losses. Unlike the Third Army, the First Army was loyal to the Sultan. In April 1909, several First Army soldiers mutinied against their officers and marched on Istanbul, demanding the restoration of the Sultan. For a while, Sultan Abdul Hamid II enjoyed a brief return to full authority. But two weeks after the mutiny, the Third Army arrived from Salonika, occupied the city, and regained control. Three days later, Parliament voted to depose Sultan Abdul Hamid II in favor of his younger brother, Mehmed V. 